Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I'm going to be giving you the first lesson in a short series devoted to harmonics on the bass guitar. We'll be looking at basic overtones and then moving into tapped and pinched harmonics as we progress through the lessons. If you've not visited TalkingBass.net, then check it out. There's a lesson map with loads more videos just like this one, all arranged into topics to make it easy to navigate and find the lesson that you need. If you subscribe to TalkingBass.net, then you'll receive the free scale reference guide that's full of loads of scale patterns for you to practice, and I do occasionally send out other freebies too. So let's have a look at some basic harmonics. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, harmonics sound like this. Okay, and you've probably used them for tuning your bass at some point because they're a lot higher pitched than most fretted notes and uh, it's a lot easier to hear the difference in pitch uh, up here than it is down, down here. So uh, they're very good for tuning. Now I'm not going to get too far into the physics of harmonics because it can bore a lot of people and you don't really need to understand everything about them in order to have some fun. But uh, basically when we pluck a string there isn't just one vibration. If I pluck this G string, that note that you hear, the G, is called the fundamental. But you don't actually just hear that one note. The fundamental is by far the loudest thing that you hear. Uh, so you don't tend to think of any quieter notes in there. But there are actually loads of other higher pitches at quieter and quieter levels. Uh, and this is because when we pluck a string, we don't just have one vibration. We have lots of smaller vibrations along the string at different points. And the smaller the wavelength of the vibrations, the higher the pitch. So when we isolate these smaller vibrations by stopping the string at certain points, hey presto, we get a harmonic. So there's the G, we stop it, and we get that higher note. So that note, that note, that note, all of these are all in there when we play this string, but we're just isolating them. So that's the basic idea behind harmonics. So now let's have a try at playing some. You know, we'll stick to the G string to start with because it's easier to hear them and actually a little easier to get them to ring out. So the first harmonic that we'll try is here at the 12th fret. So we just rest the finger lightly on the string, perfectly over the fret, uh, and pluck it and lift the finger off. Now any finger will do in the fretting hand, but I'm gonna use the first finger for now. And we lift the finger away to stop the finger from muting the harmonic once we've played it. You can actually leave the finger there, but uh, and it sounds okay, but we just have less sustain and it doesn't ring out as well. Um, harmonics are great in this way because we can play a note uh, and let it ring without holding any other hands on the neck. So, you know, just like an open string. So play that note there or that note there we have to hold the hand down but you know take the hands off and they're free to ring out if we look a little closer at the finger that's uh, that's fretting the harmonic there we don't want any pressure at all so it takes a little bit of getting used to at first um, we don't want to fret the note at all you know that's I'm holding down the G there we don't really want any pressure. If I was to look down the string, I don't want to see that string moving towards the, uh, towards the fretboard. I just want to rest the finger lightly on the string. You know, as light as you can, really. You can put on a little bit of pressure, but, but you don't want to be moving the string down. It doesn't want to be touching the fretboard at all. So, we lay it on it, pluck, and then just uh, remove the finger. You'll find that this 12th fret one, you can just hold the finger there, but it's further down you know, it does mute it slightly. You do want to lift the finger off. As for the plucking hand, it usually helps to pluck closer to the bridge back here, uh, where the strings are nice and tight. And it's also worth switching to the bridge pickup if you have one. Um, that really helps to bring out the, uh, the harmonics with the more pronounced mids. Um, so if I was there moving there, I'm on the bridge pickup. If I bring it round to the neck pickup, they don't have that ringing tone or bright tone. Now I'll take it, you can hear me moving it there to the bridge, back. You do get, you know, you obviously do get them, but they really do come out a lot better with that bridge pickup. Also, if you have tone controls on the bass or on your on your amp, you know, graphic EQ, anything like that, just try boosting the mids slightly and that should uh, help them ring out. I mean, treble does as well, 
but uh, there's there's certain areas in the mids that you can really like in the upper mids that you can really really crank to get those uh, harmonics to uh, ring out and people like Billy Sheehan uh, uses loads of compression uh, to get those squealing harmonics come out uh, you can also add distortion as well that'll really you know bring out those harmonics but uh, if you're not using distortion boost your mids and use that bridge pickup so now let's compare the open string with the harmonic so there we have the open G and there's the harmonic. So notice how that's the same note, a G, but it's an octave higher. So it's pretty much the same note as if we fretted the 12th note, but with a purer tone. Now harmonics are calculated by dividing the string into different equal divisions or ratios. When we divide the string exactly at the midpoint, we're dividing it into two halves. And this is where we get the most basic harmonic and it gives us a note an octave higher than the fundamental, just as we heard. The 12th fret is midway, it's the midway point of the string. Even though it doesn't look like it at first, if you measure the distance from the nut to that 12th fret, and then that 12th fret to the bridge, you'll find that they're exactly the same. So when we play the harmonic over the 12th fret, we get a note an octave higher than the fundamental, and it is exactly halfway along the string. So the same thing happens on any of the other, any other strings. So, you know, the D there, 12th fret we get the D, A, we get the A harmonic, E, we get the E harmonic, okay? So at the 12th fret of each one of those strings you will get a note an octave above the fundamental, you know, the open string. This harmonic at the 12th fret is obviously using the most basic division of the string, you know, just up into half. And uh, we're going to ascend through the different divisions of the string. Uh, but this first one at the 12th fret is called the first harmonic. Okay, so it's the first harmonic of the open string. And um, it's also called the first overtone. Now harmonics can also be called overtones and also called partials. I'll stick to calling them harmonics for now, just for the, you know, sake of argument and uh, just to avoid confusion. But it's, all, it's, it's worth bearing in mind that they're also called overtones and partials. And the place where we actually play the harmonic there, so in this case the 12th fret, is called a node. Okay, so the node for the first harmonic on that open G string is there at the 12th fret. Okay, so the node is where we actually put the finger. So there's a node there, a node there, a node there, okay? So as I say, that's the most basic division of the string in half. But we can also divide it up equally into threes, fours, fives, sixes, or any number. So if you divide it up into three equal parts, we obviously have three thirds. And uh, you could figure out the positions of those nodes by, uh, you know, taking the length of the string and dividing it by three. Uh, but it's actually much easier if I just let you know what frets those nodes are at. So uh, we have one here at the seventh fret, and we have one here at the 19th fret. Okay, and if you were to look at those two nodes there, the seventh uh, fret and the 19th fret, you'd, and if you measured from the nut to the seventh fret there, then from the seventh fret to the 19th fret, then from the 19th fret to the bridge, you'd find they're all exactly the same distance. So we've divided it equally into three parts. So we've got the seventh fret and the 19th fret, okay? And that's the second harmonic. So second overtone, second harmonic. So the 12th fret is the first harmonic, and then when we divide it into, into threes, we get the second harmonic. The second harmonic from any note is an octave and a perfect fifth away from the fundamental. So when we look at this open G string there, you know, we had the, uh, the octave there at the 12th fret. When we go to the seventh fret, we're an octave and a perfect fifth, so that's a D. And this is easy to see on the bass neck because that seventh fret there that we're using, if we were to actually play the fretted note, is a D. So it matches up with the harmonic. Okay. Now this doesn't work all the time with all the different harmonics, um, but it does with this one. And it obviously does with the 12th fret as well. So it's quite useful there. So we've got the D there. And then if we looked at the D string, we've got an, an A, perfect fifth above. Then for the A, we've got an E, perfect fifth above. For the E, we've got the B there. And of course we can play them at the 19th fret as well. And the fact that they recur at these different points makes it uh, easy for playing harmonics further up. You know, if you're playing up here and you need a harmonic the, of that note, instead of having to jump down here to get it, you can actually play them up here as well. So quite useful in that way.
Now we've got two harmonics on each string, that actually gives us eight nodes to play with across the strings. Which we can actually use to create some little riffs, melodies, things like that. But on the face of it, it doesn't seem like much because we've just, you know, we've just got two uh, notes on each one, the octave and, and a fifth. But because they're fairly consonant intervals um, and because of the way they sit, um, we can actually make up some nice sounding riffs with them. So uh, it's worth getting creative even with this small number of, uh, of notes. So I'll show you a little riff that uses those uh, those notes and uh, this is the same riff that you would have heard at the beginning of the uh, of the video where I'm playing a little uh, a little melody around over the top of some harmonics. Um, so that goes like this. So first of all, we're going to play the A harmonic there, 12th fret of the A string, with the little finger, pinky there, 4th finger. Then we're going to play the E there, the uh, harmonic at the 7th fret, so that's the 5th above. 12th fret, 7th fret. Then we move on to the D string and play the 7th fret harmonic there, the 2nd harmonic, which is an A. Okay, that's all it is. 12th fret and 7th fret on the A string, then the 7th fret on the D string. We just play that twice and then hold for the remainder of the bar. And that pattern's a handy pattern to see in terms of the harmonics because we've got the, the uh, A there, then we've got the fifth and then we've got the octave above the A, which would be, so we've got root, fifth, octave, but in harmonics. So once you've got that first part, we play around it twice, then we move that exact same pattern up to the D string. So we've got the 12th fret of the D string, 7th fret of the D string, and then the 7th fret of the G string. And then we move that same pattern again down to the E string, 12th fret, 7th fret, and then 7th fret on the A string. Okay, and that's it. So slowly through the whole thing, Because they all ring out, you get this nice kind of sound there, which is a lot nicer than going, you know, we get this, and they can still ring out when we move to the D. So even though that's a very basic riff, you can still see how we can be creative with that limited palette of notes. And uh, when you take something like that basic riff there and then put it into a looper, you can get something that sounds like this. There I've put the fundamental of each chord there, so the A, the D and the E. And we get this nice, uh, this nice ambient feel that we can work over uh, because the harmonics uh, are very high, so they don't muddy up with the lower notes. And then when you, uh, once you've got something like that, you can just play over the top. So far, we've only divided the string up into twos and threes, but we can obviously move on to dividing up into fours. Now, when we do this, we get nodes at the fifth fret, 12th fret, and 24th fret. And that's dividing it up into one, two, three, four. Each of those are equal distances. Um, and that gives us a note two octaves above the fundamental. So we had the fundamental open string, and we've got the uh, octave there at the 12th fret, We've got the uh, uh, fifth octave and a fifth there at the seventh fret, and now we have two octaves above, so G to G. But you may have noticed a problem here, <laughs> because we had the fifth fret there, and then I said the next one was the twelfth fret. 
But we already have a harmonic at the 12th fret. We have that first harmonic, the, uh, the octave there. And this happens a lot, where we've got several different harmonics that should be occupying the same node. Um, and when that happens, the harmonic that sounds is just the lowest of the, uh, the harmonics. So that's the preferred one, it just goes for that. So we, even though that's a node for that one, for the uh, division by four, we only ever hear that first uh, harmonic there. Because there's many, many different harmonics that could occupy that space. Uh, anything that, that uh, runs up halving. So we've got like uh, three sixths, four eighths, um, five tenths, etc. So I'll quickly run through the remaining nodes um, on that string, on the G string there, and I'll stay in this low area uh, just to uh, show the first node of each string. Uh, but it's just uh, worth remembering that there are repeats of each harmonic at recurring distances along the string. I'm just going for the first one. So we can divide the string up into five, which gives us this harmonic there, uh, a major third uh, and two octaves above the fundamental. Then we can divide it into six, which gives us an octave, uh, a, a fifth, but two octaves above. Then we can divide it into seven, which gives us a minor seventh there. Then we divide it into eight, which gives us another repeat of the fundamental, three octaves above. Then, then we're up to the, uh, divide it into nine, which gives us a major second above there. Then, then we've got 10 there, which is um, another major third, 11, and they just keep going like that. So we have, you know, and it can be quite hard to get those ones out as you, move further up here you really have to pick quite far back there but you can just uh, experiment messing around to find them there's a lot more down here within this second and third fret there once we have this fairly diverse palette of notes we can see how these harmonics actually follow the construction of a major triad and the dominant seventh chord uh, followed by the extensions of a ninth and a sharp eleventh uh, and this is really, really interesting from the viewpoint of how nature has provided a mathematical relationship between the different tones, all within a single note. So all these harmonics are all there within that single tone that you're hearing there. It's just that those harmonics are all being drowned out by the louder fundamental and the lower, the lower harmonics. The higher we go with the harmonics, the less they cut through. So um, yeah, that's all there. Nature's provided that within one single note. And um, you can hear that, uh, that major triad there if we start at the fifth fret there. So that's a, a major arpeggio and a dominant seven. All there within one single note, just on one string in that small area. So that's how we work out these natural harmonics on each string, and it's really useful to know where the notes are. Um, but a lot of people just like to mess around with harmonics and come up with various lines and pan uh, patterns by just experimenting with the different tones and how they sound uh, without any thought for what the actual note names are. You know, you can just mess around and just find nice little <laughs> patterns just by you know messing around and there's nothing wrong with that just play around with them and try to come up with sounds that you like the great thing about playing harmonics in this way is that because they ring out and sustain without holding uh, the notes down on the fretboard you can play these tight little chord voicings in there in the higher registers that sound much more like guitars or vibraphone or something like that uh, very different to the normal low sounds you know that you normally hear from a bass and as you'll see in the next couple of lessons, you can also combine them with uh, normal fretted notes and uh, other techniques to get some really cool effects. So if you want to hear some really great harmonic applications, then I definitely recommend listening to Jacob Pistorius. Uh, he really took harmonics to a different level and integrated them into his general playing style. So check out Portrait of Tracy from his debut solo album uh, to hear one of the greatest examples of harmonic playing. So now let's have a look at a few simple applications and lines that you can mess around with to get started. First of all, let's have a look at tuning with harmonics. Now this is the most widely used application for harmonics and I'm sure a lot of you are used to doing this already. But if not, let's take a quick look at it. So basically we have two harmonics here, one at the seventh fret, let's say of the G string, and the fifth fret of the next string below that are the same, the same pitch. So if we have, one of, if we know that one of these strings is in tune, so if we tune it to a piano or something like that, uh, we can then tune 
the next string down to it because they're the same note. So if, let's say I take this D out of tune, the D string, if we know the G string's in tune, we can play the harmonic there, seventh fret of the G string, and you can hear how they're out of tune. Because they're in a higher register, that really, you can really hear that, um, the, the wave in there. Okay, and then you can just bring that D up. And because, because you can play them without holding, you don't have to hold down a note, it's good for being able to take your hands off, you know, and then mess around with the tuning peg. There it is, out tune. And bring it into tune there. So now I've detuned the D, the A, and the E string. So let's just say that that G is in tune. So you can hear that out of tune. And you just move it till you hear it come back in. There it is again. Then you can hear how, because of that little wave, you just bring it back into tune. Okay. So that's a pretty practical use for harmonics. So now let's try some more musical applications and check out a few uh, little riffs and lines that you can play. So let's start with a really easy one by Chris Squire uh, from Yes. And this is the, uh, the main riff from The Fish, which is Chris's feature on the Fragile album. And all we have to do here is play harmonics on the 12th fret, from the E string across to the G string, and then the same again on the 19th fret. So we've got the first over, uh, overtone or harmonic and then the second harmonic there. And you can play those harmonics at the 19th fret down here at the 7th fret. And that's how I actually used to play it. And still would, <laughs> preferably. Uh, but I recently saw a live video of him playing this on YouTube. And he was playing it up there at the 19th fret. But either one will work, you know. So uh, try them both out, see which one you prefer. So the only tough thing about this is the rhythm. Uh, because it's in 7-4, so you just have to think of where the little uh, eighth notes there uh, are um, to give it that 7-4 uh, that feel. So we've got, so think there, uh, the D string and the G string, we've got a little skip there of eighth notes. And then when we come up, it's on the A and the D string. So the skip there is on the D and the G string at the 12th fret, and then on the A string and the string there. So just uh, rather than going right into the rhythm of 7-4, uh, just mimic what I'm playing here, just listen to the rhythm and just, uh, just try and copy it. Okay, use any finger for these things. So um, if I was to play it down here at the 7th fret, I'm using the second finger for the harmonics here at the 12th fret, then the first finger for the 7th fret, and that just just so that it's a little bit easier to jump. Okay. The next harmonic line I'll show you is the opening line to Portrait of Tracy by Jaco Pistorius. And this is a little trickier, this line, and it shows you how you can use all these notes down here to create tight runs, um, rather than these big, um, you know, root, fifth, octave, you know, fourth, uh, kind of things with the wide intervals. These are all very tight intervals in here and it gives you more of a scalar run and it sounds like this. As I just mentioned, this run is less stereotypical, uh, you know, the stereotypical harmonic sound of the fourths. Uh, it's more of a proper run and you can hear that when you play it as fretted notes. So it, it does sound like more of a, uh, a, a fretted run. Uh, so if we start there at the fifth fret of the G string, and then we have the third fret of the G string. So they're the first two notes. Then we move to the fourth fret of the D string. So we have fifth fret, third fret, G string, fourth fret, D string. Then we have the third fret of the A string. So all together, So you want to get that pattern off first, okay? And it, it, it's quite tough at first to be quite accurate because when you go for that third fret, you've got a few more, 
a few more harmonics hanging around there, so you've got to be accurate. And they're right over the frets. Then once you've nailed that pattern, we take that exact same pattern and we move it down a string. So we start on the D string, fifth fret and third fret, fourth fret of the A string, third fret of the E string. Okay, so the same pattern moved down. So slowly from the top, faster. So once you've mastered those first two patterns, we then take the uh, that pattern down again onto the next string. So fifth fret, third fret of the A string, fourth fret of the E string there. But then we move up to the seventh fret of the E string and then the twelfth fret of the E string. So very slowly. Okay. And for the fingering of the whole thing, I'm using the fifth for, uh, sorry, the fourth finger and the first finger for the uh, first two notes. Then the second finger, then the first finger. So that's the pan. Fourth finger, first finger, second finger, first finger. Slowly. And then obviously repeat that fingering pattern. But then when we move down onto this bottom one, fourth finger, first finger, and then I use the first finger for the fourth fret there, fourth finger for the uh, seventh fret, and then any finger really for the, uh, for the twelfth fret. I'm using the second finger there. So check out Jacko's playing and all the other guys like Billy Sheehan, Victor Wooten, Michael Manring, uh, all the rest of the guys that use harmonics a lot and listen to how creative you can be and how different they all are with using them. Next lesson, we'll be looking at creating chords with harmonics and how we can combine them with fretted notes for a, a, a wider variety of uses. So uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel uh, to keep up to date with the uh, uh, new weekly releases and leave a comment or like the video if it's helped you a lot. Also visit TalkingBass.net uh, for more lessons, articles, and uh, I also give Skype lessons, so get in touch if you're interested uh, in any of those, and we'll set a date and uh, day and time that suits you. Okay? See you later.